This is Rostra, the St. Theodore Guerin Junior Classical League podcast, where we bring the lessons of classical study into the light for the benefit of all. Welcome back to another episode of Rostra. And if you've been following Rostra over the past few seasons, uh, this is a name that may be familiar to you. Saren Wagner has been uh, a guest on several episodes in the past, and I personally could not be more excited about the topic you've got. Saren, what is it? I'm um, talking about uh, Roman engineering technology. Roman engineering technology, and actually I want to start off this time with some with the personal aspect for you, why this is this the perfect topic for you to be discussing. Uh, talk to us a little bit about your own interest in the engineering side of that equation. I plan on like majoring in engineering in college, and um, I'm also involved in the school's robotics club. And it's just, and then it's just like, wow, what if I talked? Wait, what did the Romans do about that? And I just found like a ton of stuff about it. I absolutely love it. You're into the robotics. You want to major in engineering, but you've got an interest in Latin, and you have been with uh, Latin for several years now, and so found a way to really bring together those two interests. So talk to us about ancient Roman engineering. So um, I think one of the most well things they're most well known for is like their aqueducts. It's pretty much essentially the first sewer system. So like I think like back then everyone would just dump water in the street. It was like kind of gross. Yeah, and, and it's, it's a combination of things, right? So the aqueducts were bringing the water in. Yeah, and also brought the water out. And 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 did a great job, uh, and especially uh, where anywhere in the world, even today, good water is essential right and, and some places still struggle with that so how did the aqueducts work how did they bring the water into the city i think they kind of just um they usually would descend from like an elevation and then they kind of come in like to the city if you believe they were underground well, some was above ground, and, yeah, some, above ground. and some above ground and that and then you, you you're exactly right bringing it in via gravity right yeah. just bringing it in from from higher elevations uh and able to bring it in from the mountain streams and so forth um tremendous and some of those are still in existence today some of them are still operational today uh which is extraordinary and we're going to talk a little bit later in the episode about uh some of the materials they use and how stuff has lasted so long but uh so certainly aqueducts one of the things people think about for roman engineering uh what else were they known for doing um really also their roads um they're like their roads they're like they're like still around today and they're even often immune from like floods because because like they would like so like how they would do it they would compose in five layers i'm gonna probably butcher those names but it's like the pavimento good statumen rudens nu the nucleus and then a fi final layer concrete. sure so you, you you talk about roads, and of course we've got the expression "all roads lead to Rome." Um, yeah. Romans needed roads, and I don't know. You, you were focused on the engineering side, so you might not have found this. But do you know why the Romans were so focused on having so many roads going everywhere? I think because they're like a major city. They're a major city, absolutely. People needing to get to the city, people needing to leave the city, and then ultimately for their armies to travel uh, is is where a lot of that came. In fact, a lot of the soldiers are the ones who helped build the roads. But you mentioned the different layers. So these roads, this is not just slap down some, some pavement, right, across dirt. You've got multiple layers, and so these roads are really well built. And, and you said still in existence? Yeah, they're still around. Some, a lot of them are still around. A lot of them still around and able to have even modern vehicular traffic. So you think about the, the weight of modern cars and so forth, uh, where before you would have had horse-drawn uh, vehicles. That just shows you how sturdy and well constructed these roads were. I mean, if you're like coming back to Rome from like spoils of war, you're probably going to get like a big carriage of like heavy stuff. Oh, absolutely, absolutely, you're right, absolutely carrying all the gold and, and the spoils of war and so forth. So you mentioned aqueducts, you mentioned roads. What else have we um, we want to focus on? There's also a lot of bridges. Um, they were Romans were really one of the first people to build like really large bridges, like like stuff like the Trajan's Bridge which is one of the oldest, the Ponte Roto and, C and Caesar, like when he was like a war gen general, he would, oft he would also have his soldiers build bridges too. Yep, 
Yeah. And if any little kid has ever tried to, uh, you know, make a bridge by just putting a long stick across two objects, you quickly realize it takes more than that to make a bridge. <laughs> and you would know that, obviously, from, you just think about the physics aspect of it, the engineering. Uh, and so here you have these ancient people who are building these massively long bridges, uh, some of them, and able, obviously, again, to handle humans, vehicles, animals. Horses. Yeah, e exactly. So it leads you to ask, you know, some questions. Uh, what did they use in terms of materials for some of this stuff? Um, so for specifically like um, this, like for like cement, they would like sub pretty much. Um, so normally you would use like sand and um, and like some limestone, but instead they decided to use volcanic ash for like a specific area of in like modern day Italy. Yeah, yeah. To make like pretty much a waterproof cement. It's pretty much like, it's, it's a mix of like lines, some of volcanic ash, and they called it the Pozzolani Rose. So, so there's the thing, you think, well, gee, if you add water to this mixture and it gets hard, that's great, but then if you put it back in water again, it should dissolve, but this stuff does not. And it's what really, it was the material aspect along with the engineering aspect coming together that allowed them to do uh, these, these incredible things. And I'm going to give a little advertisement for uh, an episode that's going to be coming up because you're going to be coming back um, in, in a few weeks. We'll have a, another episode from you on Greek engineering. And talk to us a little bit about just why we wanted to split this up instead of talking about just ancient Greco-Roman engineering all in one episode. Well, the, um, well, the Romans, they were like, um, I noticed that they seem to be like um, the Romans. They are definitely very practical. They were like yeah. good at like building, but the Greeks they were like more like theoretical in like their, their aspect of it. There's also like specific like people. And, and we won't we won't spoil that for the yeah. listeners just yet. But but, but 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 yeah, you're right. There, there's there's a difference in how we think about Greek and Roman engineering. There's so much to say about both, and quite honestly, we barely even scratched the surface. In fact, I don't even know if we have scratched the surface uh, when it comes to Roman engineering. But what, I, again, I really am intrigued by is you bringing together these two different areas of your own uh, uh, personal interests. So, uh, Sarah, it's always great to have you on the, on the show. It's great to have you uh, back again, and uh, we're looking forward to having you again soon talk about Greek engineering. Thank you for listening to Rostra. You may check out all our episodes on Spotify and follow us on social media at Garen JCL. That's at G-U-E-R-I-N-J-C-L.